In this episode of Titans of Service Now, we're going to interview Sarah Weeks of Momentum Consulting. Her website will be in the description below, and you're going to want to check it out. Remember, the purpose of Titans of Service Now is to eventually land an interview with the man himself, Mr. Fred Luddy. I can't do that without your help. So if you enjoy the content, please pass it through your network. If you want to see what I'm up to these days, I want to personally invite you to check out Vivid Charts and make your ServiceNow reporting vivid. Links in the description below. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Titans of ServiceNow series. My name is Robert the Duke Fedoric, and as you know, we're talking to all the movers and shakers in the ServiceNow ecosystem. I couldn't do that without talking to the most influential and premier staffing persona in the space, Ms. Sarah Weeks. Sarah, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. My pleasure as always. So we always start at the start. Why don't you tell the audience how you came across this ServiceNow thing? I actually fell into IT recruitment because I was doing automotive recruitment before I started to do ServiceNow because I already knew a lot about cars, but I was a bit fed up with recruitment and some of the companies that I'd worked for. And uh, somebody contacted me to get a new recruitment role. And they said, you need to speak to this IT recruitment firm and you need to, to go and interview with them. And I said, I don't really want to work in IT recruitment because I think it's going to be boring. <laughs> but I went and really liked the company and they offered me the job and said, go and have a look at different IT and different technologies and go and find something that you're interested in. And I came across ServiceNow and I found it really interesting and decided to specialize in that. You say specialization, and this is why I've got you on the show because... I don't know of anybody else in the staffing space in the ServiceNow ecosystem that took that specialization to the level of you have. Like, what recruiters does anybody else know that actually got the certifications, you know, that studies the material, can talk intelligently about the platform from a tech perspective? Uh, you tell me, but I haven't seen any. So thank you for that. It's really important to me. I have the kind of attitude, if you want to do something, then you need to do it well. And I didn't want to be one of those recruiters that picks up a few buzzwords off of a CV and tries to match people. I really wanted to know that I was matching the right people to the right job genuinely. So for me, the only way to do that was to really study the technology in detail to make sure that I knew I was asking the right questions and getting the right people in front of the right people. So uh, how might people in the ecosystem know of you? Uh, usually from LinkedIn. Um, I attend all the events, so usually uh, Knowledge and Now Forum in London. And when people look at me, they usually look at my badge and say, oh, you're her from LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> the one and only, huh? Apparently so, yes. <laughs> but that was, also, that was also your pitch to pitch. So you can tell people how they might really know you. So I am... Um, recruiting in the service now space i have clients in the uk the us canada france switzerland germany so i'm recruiting across a lot of different countries i'm all purely service now and how big is your team just me but just yeah just me maybe one day i'll expand i mm -hmm. just haven't found anybody who is willing to dedicate the time as much as i am so I just haven't expanded. I haven't, there hasn't been the right person. I just want to, again, underline the legitimacy of your service because, you know, there's a couple of times where you talk to, uh, to myself and some of my friends, uh, James and Tim, about an app in your space, right? And I got to tell you, folks, the way she describes the app and how she would build it, like, I, I don't know why she's recruiting. I don't know why you're, you're recruiting and not actually doing services on service now. I am building my app, um, so it's going to be coming at some point. Um, I've just had a few personal things over the last year, which has delayed it, but it will be coming at some right. point. The app is going to be recruitment focused. It really automates the entire recruitment process. So it eliminates all of the need for admin within recruitment, which is the thing that recruiters and all salespeople hate the most. It makes the process easier for hiring managers because they're linking directly into an out of service now. It standardizes mm -hmm. feedback so that recruiters can actually pass the feedback onto candidates. It 
enables every candidate to be answered because every candidate comes through the system and you reject or accept every single candidate that comes in so everybody gets a response i can't wait to see this fly i'm really excited about it i think sometimes you use some softwares and you know that the person who designed it didn't do the job that the Mm -hmm. the software is intended for and so there are always things that are missing or that it doesn't quite do but I really spend a lot of time thinking about me as a recruiter and what do I want a software to do and I've made sure that it does absolutely everything that you could possibly need it to do and more. Which is really just the essence of what ServiceNow was put here to do right I mean we all know it started in ITSM but you know I just live for these kind of stories where it's somebody who's got serious workflow, serious automation gaps, and they don't have time to build an application from scratch, but you give them a platform like ServiceNow and all of a sudden, you know, whole new possibilities are available to you. Yes. And as soon as I saw ServiceNow, even four years ago, I looked at it and thought this is made for recruitment. That's crazy. (laughs) That's crazy. It just had so much potential uh, for the automation side. And I just the softwares that I had used up to that point didn't really automate any part of the process so Mm -hmm. I just looked at it and I just knew that as the platform developed that the potential for having something for recruitment on that would be huge. So tons of optimism about the platform and and what you can do about it. Have you had any like dark moments in the ServiceNow space or things where it's like oh I'm not sure if I'm going to make it or like deep challenges? I guess the challenge is always with the recruitment side, the shortage of people in the space. And how do we get more people into the space? Because I have had a client who does purely service now, but has needed some other skill sets. And I've managed to fill the roles within 24 hours. To find a really experienced service now person can take two months sometimes depending on what the skill set Mm -hmm. is so I guess that's the biggest challenge and the thing that makes you think sometimes is it right to just specialize in just this in my other podcasts and some of my other videos I talk about skills that are good to have in the service now space I really like your opinion on that besides the hard service now skills what other skills would you wish that your candidates had I think especially in the UK in the way that the partner managers within ServiceNow are kind of encouraging where the new partners are starting up is having specialisms within ServiceNow. So Mm -hmm. there are like CSM specialist partners and ITOM specialist partners in the UK. So really grabbing hold of something that you're passionate about within the platform and gaining skills and experience around that, I think would stand someone in really good stead at the moment. Tilting the question the opposite direction, what would you wish that your customers or potential customers knew about the ServiceNow ecosystem, you know, before or during their search for a resource? I guess it's the same with this as it is with lots of different types of recruitment. You're not necessarily going to find someone who ticks all of the boxes all of the time. What are the core requirements of what you need this person to do and what can you train them to do? Because a lot of the time, there are some quite strict requirements, which narrow the candidate pool down significantly. Whereas if we focused on maybe two or three things that this person absolutely has to be able to do from day one, but maybe we can train them on a few of the other things, um, then it opens up the candidate pool significantly and encourages more people into the space and enables to get more people into the space. So it's the second time you said more people into the space. Are you finding that even all this time has passed and the demand is still such that we need new entrants? Hugely. The salaries in the UK have increased so much over the last four years, purely because there are so few people with good skills and experience in the space. What we need is more programs to get people trained into service now. I provide graduates for free to all of my clients for that reason. I, I want to try and help them to get more junior people so that they can train them the other issue is that people see the contracting rates and it's kind of the level of experience before people start contracting sometimes I don't think they quite add up so you'll have someone with one or two years experience who start contracting and some clients will take them on for 500 pound a day 
but really they mm-hmm. should be in a permanent role for at least another two or three years before they go into the contracting space. Yeah, a little premature, right? Yeah. I tend to agree with you there. I want somebody who's who's like seen some scary stuff and you really don't get that, you know, unless you've had some time on the clock, right? Yeah. If you're employing a contractor and you're looking for someone at such a high day rate, you need someone mm-hmm. that can come in immediately, hit the ground running. This is tell people what they need to do on the project, be in more mm-hmm. of an independent role. And you're just not going to be able to do that with 18 months experience on the platform. You need to have experienced multiple customers platforms how different people do it one of the biggest pluses and minuses of the service now platform is its customizability the way that one customer chooses to implement service now will be completely different from another it takes you a long time to be able to learn the different nuances of the platform and to see the different ways of implementing and the best ways of doing it being somebody who basically picked up service now from nothing not even an it background do you have any special insights for people to get into this space and to learn the tool from scratch? I would say to start with, to look to YouTube. There are loads and loads of amazing videos out there to introduce you to the platform. You can download your own instance for free to help find your way around the platform immediately. Um, in terms of learning the coding skills, I went on to um, something called Code Academy, um, and started to learn the basics of JavaScript. So there's loads of free tools out there to help you to start learning the platform. Totally hear you on Codecademy. I didn't start with that, but a few years into my service journey, I did the Codecademy JavaScript course to see what else. And I, f- I felt like, you know, I took that Codecademy JavaScript course and it was like, oh, that's exactly what I learned over the past, you know, however long I was doing it at the time. I've been in it for a while. Okay. I always tell people, some of the most interesting ServiceNow resources out there are people that not only didn't come from a development background, or, or but not even an ITSM background. So is there anything about your previous experience, maybe in the automotive recruiting or even before that, that you feel has given you an advantage in the space? Um, I think having lots of different experience generally gives you experience, gives you better experience to do whatever you do going forward. I took a long time to find where I wanted to be because I was convinced I wanted to be a lawyer. And so I Mm -hmm. originally did a law degree. And when I couldn't become a lawyer, I didn't really know what else to do. So I did lots of sales jobs, which gained me the experience to become a recruiter. And so, yes, definitely, there are skills that you can gain from other areas. The best skills that you can get in terms of being a consultant are the communication skills, moreover than the development skills. So having jobs before IT where you've been doing lots of communicating and talking to people will give you those you know, talking to the customer skills that you need on top of all of those development skills. So we're creeping up on time. Uh, I'm going to leave the last question a little bit open. So if you could tell us maybe one part of the platform that you're just really excited about, be it present day or uh, in upcoming versions, or if there's anything you change about the space, what would it be? So the thing that I think is most important to service now is the HR module. Because if you think about a business, HR is where the data touches first. When you have an employee, they need to be onboarded. So all of their data is collected at that first point of entry at HR. Once HR have it, that can then be passed on to all the other areas of service now that you're connected to, whether it be IT or project management or the financial side of ServiceNow, any other area, that data that's collected can be passed on without any kind of duplication. So to me, HR is the key to making the platform truly enterprise-wide. And you think ServiceNow has got um, got a good shot in that market with all the other competitors in there, like Workday? and Yes, I think that the customers that ServiceNow tend to target are the large enterprise customers who are committed to looking at using ServiceNow enterprise-wide. The HR module of ServiceNow definitely 
has the potential and already has a lot of the functionality that the other competitors have, but it also has the added bonus and benefit that it is connected and in the platform, as well as all the other areas of the platform that they're using, which is really what the point of ServiceNow was when it was first conceived. That's an opinion I don't hear much before. Uh, Thank you for bringing that to us. Yes, I mean... The whole point of ServiceNow when it was very first designed was that here's a blank platform, build whatever you want on top of it. But people, it was too ahead of its time. So the ITSM module was really only built to show the capability of the platform and not for it to be an ITSM tool. It's now kind of 15 years later, everyone's starting to say, oh, it's an enterprise-wise tool, but actually it's only just becoming what it was first conceived to be when it was born. Yeah, it's funny, you know, every every few years I I listen to the sales staff and it's usually the new sales staff and they're like, oh, you can, you can build this on it. That's amazing. And we get all these social media posts about the flexibility of service now. And I'm like, oh, they rediscovered themselves again. That's awesome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Sarah Weeks, a serious service now thought leader, cleverly disguised as a staffing expert. Please check her out at Momentum Consulting. The link is going to be down in the description. Check her out if you're a ServiceNow customer needing seriously vetted talent by someone who actually knows the platform. And check her out if you're a seasoned ServiceNow resource looking to expand to the consulting market. Sarah, it was so good having you here. Thank you very much for having me. It's been really nice talking.